I've always been hesitant to install ozone on my tanks. It seemed complicated, there were some possible health ramifications, and to be frank, there just weren't any good beginner videos to show you how to correctly set up an ozone generator. Then I saw Elliot's 800 gallon system at his marine collector's headquarters, and I decided from that very moment that it was time for me to get ozone educated. Matthew here, your BRS beginner guru, and I'm gonna teach you how to set up an ozone generator. What is ozone and what does it do? The oxygen we breathe is just two oxygen atoms bound together, hence O2. Ozone is three oxygen atoms bound together, O3. But that third oxygen atom really doesn't want to be there and will jump ship as soon as possible, causing an oxidizing reaction with whatever it comes into contact with. Two common examples of oxidation. The first is rust. When steel or iron comes into contact with the oxygen in water, it oxidizes, forming rust. And the second example is how the inside of an apple turns brown. It oxidizes when it comes into contact with the air. Do you know that smell that occurs during a lightning storm? That's the smell of ozone being created as lightning breaks the bonds of O2 into single oxygen atoms, and then some of those atoms reform into ozone or O3. Well, an ozone generator basically does the same thing as oxygen. It breaks the bonds of O2. By using an electrical current, a corona discharge ozone generator splits apart oxygen molecules into single atoms. And while a lot of those oxygen atoms will just reform back into O2, some of them will form into O3, ozone. So then what does ozone do in our tanks? The primary function is it breaks down the yellow pigments in our tank water. This does two things in our systems. Firstly, it makes the water crystal clear, even more clear than you previously thought possible. And secondly, it allows more light to reach your corals. While it's true that activated carbon can accomplish a lot of the same things as ozone, you'll have to change the activated carbon frequently as it easily gets clogged with organics. On top of that, you'll be creating waves of yellow pigmentation in between carbon changes, which means you'll be affecting how much light reaches your coral. Are there other benefits to running ozone in your system? Maybe. Some hobbyists report a reduction in nuisance algae growth, while others claim it breaks down toxins created by corals. But we just don't have any good experiments to prove these claims one way or another. And what about those health concerns I mentioned earlier? It's well known that breathing in ozone is not good for your health. It can damage your lung tissue and cause a whole host of breathing issues. So then why would we even consider adding an ozone generator to our system if we know that it's bad for us? Well, let me start out by saying that hobbyists have been using ozone ozone generators in their homes safely for decades. First off, we are only adding a limited amount of ozone which we are measuring with ORP probes. Secondly, we are adding ozone to our tank water, not directly to the air. Thirdly, ozone is an incredibly unstable molecule and will react, oxidize, with whatever it comes into contact first and that's almost always the tank water. And lastly, we will be adding dry activated carbon to adsorb any ozone that might escape. Of course, if you're still nervous about it, do your own research before making a decision as to whether or not ozone is right for you. All right, it's time to install our ozone generator. There are a couple different brands to choose from, but we're gonna use the Anali Ozak Plus 100 kit for our install. It comes with the generator itself, ozone safe tubing, a built-in ORP controller, and desiccant. To complete this setup, you'll also need an ORP probe, a protein skimmer, some activated carbon, and a large media bag. If you decide to go with a different generator, here's a few things you'll wanna keep in mind. First off, ozone is really hard on plastic. That includes skimmer bodies, flexible tubing, and fittings. Be sure to use ozone-safe products like Flexilene tubing and Kynar fittings. Next, check with the manufacturer of your protein skimmer to see whether or not it's ozone safe. And lastly, humidity reduces the efficacy of ozone generators by up to 50%. So you'll need to dry the air before it enters the ozone generator using a desiccant. All right, now back to our install. Here are the basics. First, you cut a small piece of the included ozone safe tubing. Use the tubing to connect the other end of the desiccant container to either airlit port on the Enelie Ozak Plus 100 unit. Next, use the flexible tubing to connect the other airlit port to your protein skimmer. Lastly, connect your ORP probe to the ozone generator. That's really all it takes to set up an ozone generator for your system, but there's still a lot more you need to know. First, let's start with the placement of the generator. Ideally, you want to place it above the water level. 
That way, in case of a power outage, tank water doesn't backfill the flexible tubing and enter the ozone generator. Since I'm installing this in my water box 100 gallon frag system, I just bought a couple of these braces at Ace Hardware and screwed them into the inside of my cabinet stand. Then to make them a bit more secure, I've added a couple pieces of Velcro to the underside of the generator. If you have to set up your ozone generator below the water line, I'd recommend purchasing one of these ozone resistant Kynar check valves and install it in between the protein skimmer and the generator. Moving on to the air dryer, ideally you want to place this outside of the sump area in a dry location. You can totally place it inside your cabinet stand next to your sump, but just know that the moist air will deplete the desiccant a lot faster. You'll know the desiccant's used up because it starts out orange and then turns dark green when it's exhausted. Luckily, you can dry desiccant in the microwave or the oven simply by following the included instructions. Since I can, I'm going to attach the air dryer to the side of my control board and run the tubing around the rear of the cabinet stand into the generator. Before we talk about how to connect the generator to the skimmer, I think it's important that we spend a little time talking about the ozone generator itself. There is no mechanism inside the generator body to push the ozone out. It's passive in that way, which means we need some method to get the ozone out of the generator and into our protein skimmer. How we do this is by attaching the ozone generator to the air input on our protein skimmer. Some skimmers have a dedicated ozone port specifically for this function. But if your skimmer doesn't, and mine doesn't, you have a couple options. The first is to attach it to the air silencer. The second is to attach it directly to the Venturi adapter on the pump intake. Either one of these options will work well because the pump will suck in air from the tubing, which in turn pulls ozone out of the generator, which in turn draws in dry air through the air drying desiccant. Now you can just use your primary protein skimmer for this, or you can pick up a secondary, small, and inexpensive protein skimmer that is just dedicated to ozone. While some hobbyists report that ozone increases skimmer performance, other hobbyists say it decreases skimmer performance. And on top of that, I'm just not sure if my primary DC protein skimmer is ozone safe, so I'd rather use a different, less expensive protein skimmer just in case. Now that you have the protein skimmer connected to the ozone generator, it's easy to see how it all functions. Your protein skimmer basically acts like a reactor chamber, pulling in tank water and ozone and giving them a large aerated space to interact. The next thing we need to do is to add a bag of activated carbon to the top of the protein skimmer. The vast majority of air that enters the protein skimmer exits through the holes on the top of the collection cup. Ozone already has a really short lifespan, but we want to minimize how much ozone escapes into the air. By placing a bag of dry activated carbon on top of the collection cup blocking the holes, we are forcing the air that's exiting the protein skimmer to go through the activated carbon, which can remove the ozone before it has a chance to get into the air. The main tricks here are number one, to keep the carbon dry, and number two, not to use pelletized carbon as the ozone can break apart the binding agent and turn your carbon pellet into carbon dust. The last thing we need to do before turning on our ozone generator is to talk ORP. ORP stands for Oxidation Reduction Potential. At its most simple level, ORP measures the ability of your tank water to break down waste and contaminants and to clean itself. The higher the ORP, the greater the cleaning potential. For our systems, the ORP reading will tell us how much ozone we're putting into our tanks. The more ozone we add, the higher the ORP reading will be. Never ever run your ozone generator without an ORP monitor. Luckily for us, the Anali Ozak Plus 100 comes with a built-in ORP controller. You never want the ORP in your system to get above 400, and in fact, I've seen recommended levels of between 300 with a limit of 375. My goal here is to use the least amount of ozone possible to achieve clear water free of yellow pigments. I'm gonna start with a max ORP reading of 325 and slowly inch my way up to 375 only if I'm not seeing those results. Be sure to connect the ORP probe to your controller before turning it on, and I'm gonna use a probe holder to keep it in place in my sump. We're finally almost ready to turn on our ozone generator, but there are two more things I need to note. First, if you ever smell ozone, that fresh lightning storm smell, it's time to change your activated carbon. When properly operating, you should never smell ozone in your house. And secondly, if you're still concerned about the effects of ozone on your health, you can always just run your generator at night. Just plug it into a controller or a Wi-Fi strip 
and set it to turn on and turn off while you're sleeping. Okay, it's finally time to turn on the generator. Turn the ozone knob to zero and the ORP set to 100%. Position the selector to ORP reading. Plug in the generator. The display will now show the ORP from the probe. Move the selector switch to ozone and adjust to your desired level. As a starting point, set 15 milligrams per hour for every 25 gallons of tank water. So for me, that would be 60 milligrams an hour. Next, move the selector switch to ORP set and set your desired ORP level. For me, I'm going to start it at 325 and be sure you never go above 375. It can take several days to reach your desired ORP readings, but if after a few days you don't see it increasing, then you can turn up the ozone little by little until you see the desired results. I've been running my ozone generator for a total of 24 hours, and I want to show you some before and after videos. The tank water is much clearer, way more clear, but it's hard to capture on video. But where you can see it is using the good old five gallon bucket trick. Here is the tank water from yesterday before ozone was installed. And here is the tank water from today, 24 hours later. The yellow pigmentation is gone and only crystal clear water remains. Now that I have some blue lagoon like clear water, my next upgrade will be to kill pathogens, disease and nuisance algae using a UV sterilizer. Click here to learn how. And as always, everyone, thanks for watching. Happy reefing. Be well. We'll see you next time.